20 change. Thank you very much. My name is Stan Love and I'm the owner of Pilgrim's Ice Cream Parlour. We were thinking of a name when we first opened uh, nine years ago. We were thinking, what should we call it? And as we are quite associated with Pilgrim Fathers, we called it Pilgrim's Ice Cream because it's reputed that the Pilgrim Fathers at some stage of the game definitely stayed all around the Barbican and it's reputed that they might have stayed in this location, in this house itself. Another large chocolate. So that's our um, whipping machine. When it's colder on one side than the other, it starts the thing spinning round because it will sense that the, the temperature's right over the way. Otherwise, you get cold ice cream at the end. Where the, it's a liquid, you see, and it goes through into uh, the centre of the machine to make it colder. And then the top is like a reservoir. And it's all like milk in there. Everything at uh, the same temperature. Otherwise, you get the, the ice cream in the middle, the liquid, getting warm. And it shouldn't get above about five. I had an ice cream parlour up on the Ho seafront for a couple of years uh, and also I had um, a donut business and I run them in unison on the seafront and they're on a bid process where every three years the council asks you to re-bid for the actual site and if you bid enough money you get them back again and if you don't, you don't. And um, I lost my donuts uh, business because I was outbid. And after that, I had a year off because my wife and I decided to open a business together. And we had a year off to have a look around and see what we could find. And um, all of a sudden, this shop popped up and I thought, ah, that would be good. It's a marvelous position. So I thought, yeah, grab it. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> I love the atmosphere of the Barbican as well. I mean, it's great working here. You've got so many different people during the summer season, all different nationalities. You've got this, the water just across the way there. It's just a great place to do, run a business. And knowing that this was the first settlement of Plymouth, it's, it's great. I love it here. I love it. So do you think being on the Barkin is really good for business, obviously in the summer season and when it's sunny? <laughs> um, no, not really. <laughs> because um, it's a short season. That's the problem. I mean, summer season's fine. But actually, we don't. We actually don't work the full year. We only work nine months, because December, January, February, on no no months, there's nobody here. It's quiet. It's cold, and the trouble is, you've still got to pay your rent, rates, and all your utility stuff, even though you're not here. So it t tends. We tend to make the money in the summer and spend it all, and then we start again next year with a no draft. <laughs> but you know, um, I like it. You know, and I think it's important in life to do things you like, and. Um, I, I do, I enjoy it. My father actually started a business selling jacket potatoes and he approached Chesterton Zoo who asked him to come in and sell jacket potatoes. So he asked me to give him a hand sometimes to, to help because some days were very, very busy. So I took a day off from my driving and helped him. And he only had a little pitch and, and a little stand and an, a jacket potato oven, which he cooked them and put the fillings on. And then Ch Chessington Zoo decided to modernise and turn it into Chessington World of Adventures, putting all massive writing, because they could see the writing on the wall that zoos um, were going out of fashion. People didn't really want to see animals in cages anymore. They wanted to see them in the open. So they decided, in their wisdom, to open it as a, a theme park come zoo. And they asked him to do his jacket potatoes from the building. And at that point, he said to me, look, I can't do this on my own. I said, okay, um, I'll come in with you. I'll, I'll leave my business and I'll come in, in in the jacket potato business. And that's how I started in catering. I didn't really know anything about it at all. Yes. That is caramel peak and crunch. All right, that's fine. It's very nice. Would you like it in any particular coat? Uh... One of those? Um, I had a delivery this morning because we had a really good Saturday and a fairly reasonable Sunday but next weekend could be wet and I just don't I don't order again it it just depends and totally on what what kind of week I've had and weather wise 
Um, I could go next two weeks and hardly order anything at all, and all of a sudden I could say, wow, we've had a fantastic weekend, I could order. They um, deliver on a Monday and a Thursday. Well, the important thing is to get the, the, um, the quantity right, because at the end of the day, you can't sell an ice cream. You can sell an ice cream once, but you can't necessarily sell it twice, because if you go into an ice cream place and they don't give you what you feel you've paid for, well, I personally wouldn't go back. So I always say to my girls, you know, I want to see it a nice, if, if it's small, then I'll take it back and say, excuse me, and I'll put more on. Because I've got a couple of trainees at the moment, yeah. and I've got to keep a very close eye on them. Just make sure they are giving the right quantity and, and it looks okay. It's got to look nice, and also it's got to be the right quantity, very important. My favourite, uh, strangely enough, mine actually is a, a yoghurt. I like the lemon meringue frozen yoghurt. Reason being, actually, I'm not a yoghurt person, but it doesn't taste like yoghurt, it tastes like ice cream. And that's the only flavour we've got in our, out of 26 flavours in our servery, it's the only yoghurt in there. Uh, I love it. And it's, it's hardly any fat in it, so I think, oh, I can have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we have an extra bit on this shop. We've got our ice cream place up there, and we've got this, this bit, and I'll be honest, I didn't know what to put in this area here. Um, so really, I just racked my brains and decided, well, okay, let's try coffee, coffee and tea. Simply because I honestly couldn't think of anything. I couldn't yes. think. Um, I racked my brains to think, what do I do? Do I do waffles or do I do cakey bits and stuff? And in the end, I just thought coffee and tea would be so easy. Um, and that's, that's where I am, really. You must excuse me. There you go, ladies. It's exactly four pounds, please. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So I, the wife and I decided to open a business together and thought it'd be a great idea to work together. So we had a year off and we looked for a business anywhere in Devon, really. We were quite flexible and we found a fish and chip shop in North Devon. And we said, wow, this is great. I think we'll have this, it was brilliant. Um, I put an offer in and the gentleman said okay and after three weeks nothing was happening, I wasn't getting any lists of solicitors, I expected something and I rang this lister up and he said well the man wants £5,000 more and we were so disappointed because it's what we wanted, it was, it was a good business. So strange as it may seem, the next morning my wife, we take it in turns to make the coffee my wife and I and I was in bed and she brought me up my coffee, it was her turn, and a letter. And the strange thing was, it was this shop from a, an estate agent that we had previously registered a couple of years before. And that's fate, isn't it? It's really, really weird. To finance it, we actually sold our house. Because we have got no children at home, we sold our house and we downsized, which left about £40,000 um, spare. So we use that money to actually fit the shop out. You, if you look around, it doesn't seem a lot, but yeah, it costs it costs quite a lot to get the the, um, the floor done and all the units. I mean, this one alone is um, thirteen thousand pounds. That unit there, the servery, and um, so we quickly spent the money. <laughs> but it was worth it because we both. Um, we both enjoyed working in here, but now, after three years, we've now got the shop across the road, and it's the, uh, the little ice, uh, tuck shop, the um, sweets and fudge. So it's great now because my wife runs that, I run this, and um, then we can actually talk something about something, yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, what we also do, we, we've got a system here, we've got the radio, and um, the weekends at, on Saturday we were so busy in here and I just give her two buzzes I don't even have to talk into it and she knows that I'm I'm in trouble I've got a lot of big queue so she runs over and gives a hand so we kind of swap staff as well so we make sure the staff in here know exactly how that works so we can t send people over there she gets sometimes gets um, hordes of French school children about 40 or 50 and they all bundle in and she's like ringing on here by mad help help so it's very good. It's very it's a good system. It works very well having the shops very close.